What would you encourage uh, men? They're, they're going, they want to go through a transformation. What kind of example do you want to set for your kid? You can have all the money in the world, but if you're not healthy, then nothing's going to happen, right? right? If you were to pick one skill set, what skill set would you have them focus on, improve on? If you can be 1% better in every area of your life, at the end, you're going to look back in a month and go, holy crap, this is like, I made some change. How do I recreate myself? I think it, it all starts from one thing, making a decision. Let's get So my guest today went from 14-year-old fat kid to tech entrepreneur to the CEO of Icon Meals, based here in Dallas, Texas. He also has got a podcast called The Dad Bod Show, and uh, I'm honored because I've been purchasing his products, his, his meals at the gym I've been going to, and in the uh, Ultimate Sports Nutrition, I'd get my shake set, and I'd pass by, there's right there, the cooler's there with his meals. So, Todd Abrams, welcome to the show, brother. Pleasure Appreciate having. you being here. Thanks, Matt. So what you benching these days, bro? Uh, not a whole lot. Not as much as uh, Mr. O'Hearn, but try to keep up. <laughs> it's your boy. It's your yeah, buddy. It is. It is. So how how'd you build a uh, friendship? He's an he's an LA guy. You're you're a Canada guy, Texas guy. Yeah. How did you run across Michael? O'Hearn? Originally through uh, just network connection and stuff. Um, at a different show, and then Mike. Pretty much since we started Daikon Meals day one, has been uh, was an ambassador, a good friend, built a friendship up, and wow. um, became family and friends. To where, as I mentioned, um, one of uh, Titan's Godfathers. So it's uh, been a just great guy. Awesome, awesome. So, so tell us about your, your background because you're a Canada guy, and then some you know, conversation we're going to have throughout the show is, you know, your pers- you have a, your perspective from both Canada and United States, and we got elections coming up. So I'd love to have your insight because. <laughs> A lot of our friends, a lot of our viewers are from the States, and these just don't have any perspective. I, I was able to get perspective serving in the military, so I know it's out there outside of the United States. A lot of people don't, mm-hmm. outside of them just going to resorts in Mexico, et cetera, et cetera, or Hawaii. And so you can, you know, I want to have some perspective of the two different countries from your end. And also, obviously, uh, you're, you're a health guy and uh, you're an entrepreneur, so I've got some questions here about how you've built your company, how you've made your money, and, and what you would recommend for guys are getting older and entrepreneurs that that may not be eating the right things and and so um let's let's talk about uh, your, your upbringing you said you're a 14 year old fat kid so talk yeah. to us about that situation what did that do and what impact did it have in your life yeah so when I, I think when we say fat kid right wasn't morbidly obese or anything okay but well overweight <laughs> probably i don't know back then 38 plus inch waist so still by standards pretty big boy probably my max weighed a bit 260 pounds but um grew up playing sports so Again, played most of my life junior hockey and stuff. That was sort of the activity up in Canada. Um, from that standpoint, I loved working at the gym and stuff, but really didn't know anything about nutrition, right? I just thought like Big Macs and Cokes and everything were what I should be putting in. It was just calories in, calories in, calories in. And then yeah. sort of as I got into my later high school years and stuff, the the, the parties and the like sort of everything that everyone wants to do, right? Get yeah. into different things. It's just... Um, Again, it wasn't really until I started understanding a little bit more about food that that started to change. But that was, um, so really what I guess happened during my last year prior to going into college, I uh, had always been working landscaping jobs or hard sort of manual mm-hmm. labor jobs. And I got really sick. So I got mono um, really bad and ended up in the hospital for two weeks. And I lost um, 41 pounds wow. in two and a half weeks. So it was the point I almost had to get like tracheotomy. All that stuff was in intensive care. And uh, when I came back out, though, I wouldn't say that's the way you want to lose weight, right? Because from that standpoint, getting sick, yeah. well, yeah, but also just from muscle loss and everything yeah. standpoint, I'd lost like almost, I think, three inches off my waist. I'd and, lost. And what, what period of time? That was 21 days. So did you have any skin? So you had like, yeah. again, you, you just like even to try to stand up in the shower, right? For a while, I was sitting in a chair in the shower, taking a shower wow. because you just have that muscle loss, right? But that's what really sort of was my first, I'll call it, going from being this overweight to less, mm-hmm. I call myself sort of there was skinny fat, right? Still not knowing anything, but went to college. I was supposed to play hockey in college. Didn't end up playing just based on, I played like intramural and other stuff, but from that standpoint of losing mm-hmm. all that muscle, all that weight. Yeah. Um, and then it was really into college. I had a, a couple of guys that were working at more, I'll call it semi-amateur bodybuilders yeah. that were more into the nutrition and stuff. And that's really, again, just learning and you become sort of that project for yourself, right? Yeah. And I loved um, pushing myself, that intensity in the gym. And then once I started, okay, hey, learning what protein I needed to put on my body and sort of the carbs and the macros and the nutritional information and what my body really needed to be able to grow, to be able to recover. 
and again, just educating, right? Educating yeah. myself, reading all the back in Canada it was all the muscle mags. So of course, as, as you were talking about Phil Heath, so yeah, you see like Jay and Ronnie and Phil and like yeah. Mike back in the magazines and stuff, and that would be like sort of hey, I, I want to be like these guys, right? And, yeah, uh, it's funny because literally thirty years later, we have photo shoots with me and Mike and stuff. And you take those pictures that you see him in the magazine 10 years before. It's pretty cool. But um, there's a bunch of stuff like that. And it's just, mm -hmm. again, education, education, what's learning. And then people are like, hey, what did you do? And all this stuff. It's just, again, putting one piece in front of another. But it was really just learning from my mistakes yeah. that allowed me to be my own sort of. And, and right. you being a sponge to everybody that's doing it the way you would like to see an outcome on your end to do it too as well. And you would, I gather you. Yeah. Good. And once you started seeing yeah. the change, I yeah. think that's what really got me. I have like, I won't say addictive personality, but it's almost like that. And that's yeah. why I really, yeah. people are always like, Hey, what are you taking? I'm like, I've never taken anything because I knew my addictive personality. Sure. I want more. Right. Yeah. For me, it's like, Hey, you don't know how much to take. It's like when and did double the amount sort of thing. Like, mm -hmm. so from that standpoint, it was just, again, I saw the results and I think, okay, if I could put in more hours, right? And back then I was probably training, we were training like crazy, two hours, three hours, yeah. this and that, and way over training. And it was like the hardcore, I was into all of a sudden that chicken and rice and this and that. But that's what sort of got me started, right? Yeah. Into that um, sure. better lifestyle. But I was still carrying on the other activities of the drinking and of the mm -hmm. different things that, that's a whole nother, like many years later when that was like a hard stop. And yeah. that's when I saw a big change. You know, one of the, Biggest question I get from our, our, our viewers and the people that we coach and mentor is, man, how do I recreate myself? You know, I want to recreate myself financially. I want to create my life, my family, et cetera. I just don't like where my life is. And in my book, Faith Made Millionaire, I said one of the fastest ways and easiest ways to start recreating yourself, which is probably counterintuitive to everybody I talk to in the church, is that get into a fitness regime. You would think that I, I'd yeah. say, you know, a, a faith regime. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I'd say, you know, that's got to be the foundation. But if you don't have a fitness regime, a fitness recreation strategy, you're going to pray all you like and this and discipline, yeah. but that's a spiritual thing and that, that takes a process to grow through. But if you get a fitness regime, in the first 30 days, you're going to see some or at least feel yeah. some sort of result. The same thing I say. Like I tell people all the time, like for me, I told you it's sort of like faith, family, fitness, and finance, uh -huh. right? But that's the foundation. And I say, hey, you can pray all day, but if you're not taking action, yeah. then nothing's going to happen, right? right? So from that standpoint, I think it, it all starts from one thing, making a decision, okay? Yeah. And once you make that decision, yeah. I, I use a couple of words. I say, hey, you got to live an excuseless life. And I don't even know if that's the proper word, but from that's that standpoint, it means you have to stop accepting your own excuses because so many people I see accept their own excuses, accept their own excuses, right? In life, yeah. sales, you're either buying or you're selling, okay? Yeah. And people say, oh, I'm not a salesperson. Well, you're selling yourself on your own excuses, if you, not, right? You bought, you bought a bad one. Bad one. So you have to make that decision and then hold yourself accountable. Yeah. I tell people all the time, like I've coached a lot of different people that like, I'm the kind of guy, like I can't rip your head off and put my head on your body. Right. But that's where I feel like so much accountability and responsibility. Like I know they can do it, but mm -hmm. then it almost bothers me when they're, they're not taking that action right or they're giving me those excuses. So it's if you can't hold yourself accountable, find someone else that can hold you accountable to that at least. And people yeah. are like, that's where the cold coach or mentor or whatever comes in. Yeah. Um, but again, it's when you're in that surrounding yourself, it's the same yeah. thing, right? Who those five people you surround yourself. But you mentioned like this sort of fitness regime. Sure. That's when I started, right? With different people that were of that like mindset that yeah. had achieved those results that I wanted to achieve or different things and allowed me to, hey, it is possible and then just put in that work, put in those steps, right? And as you become more and more and more making those decisions, those become habits, and then those habits give you the end results. And then all you're doing from there is you're fine tuning. Yeah. So I call a lot of things like, what I've learned over the years are really just tools or resources. Yeah. Yeah. It's like arrows in the quiver, right? Yeah. What tool do I need to get the result I want? Yeah. And then like keep yeah. adjusting those along the way. Yeah, like I'm, I'm talking to Chris here. Chris just moved here from, uh, from, from by way of San Diego, Memphis down to Dallas, and he started working out with my trainer, started getting into the gym. And you recognize already in the first 30 days, because you guys went to like a, a kid's, uh, like a jump, jumping gym or something, right? So, and, and how, how old are your kids? Uh, three, seven. And then the oldest? 17. Yeah, three, seven, 17, right? And so he noticed right away that when the younger kids say, hey, daddy, come chase me, come right after me. He's like, all right, let's go. Whereas before, it's like, all right, you going ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? And, and he's, he's working hard. You know, he's, a, he's a roll tight Alabama guy, but, uh, <laughs> you know, but he's, he's down here in Dallas. But... What, what, what would you say is, okay, we're busy entrepreneurs. We're rocking and rolling on time. You may not like this, Dad, but I'm working on a couple hours of sleep and I feel fine. And I know that's not good for the body to recover. 
And if I had to, for me to sleep in, I'm sleeping in about five, six hours at, at most. Mm -hmm. And I know, again, I know that's not good. So what, what would you recommend for guys like myself that are entrepreneurs? And, and what gets me to sleep is, what gets me not to sleep is I'm just so excited yeah. about every day. Yeah. And it's not like I got insomnia. I'm just fired up that I'm not squeezing every bit of productivity from the day. But how can we get in a better sleep recovery yeah. routine and better uh, nutrition routine? So, so one of the biggest things for me is I'm like you on the sleep, right? That's probably my one, I'll call it weakness, right? Yeah. I typically was like a four hour, five hour, and I'm trying to get better. <laughs> but you both. the biggest thing is, again, and it is for me, like I'm waking up, I told you every day pretty much. If I set my alarm at four, it's gonna be three o'clock, 307, 317, 314, whatever. I don't need to wake up, like no alarm clock. But yeah. it's the same thing with me. Once I wake up, my mind starts going, right? I'm like right. excited for that day. I've got so much, so many yeah. different things I wanna do. But what I've tried to do, and as I told you with my eight-year-old, right? So I have the two older and my eight-year-old, I've been trying to then put him to bed. So I'm home, right? Try to get him to bed at 8.30, 9 o'clock. So I'm gonna read him stories, say his prayers, et cetera. So I'm falling asleep almost in his bed, right? That's probably my best two hours of sleep. I'll wake up, go in <laughs> my bed and stuff. Yeah. But from that standpoint, the time, I've learned that if I can build a time that I'm going to bed pretty much at the same time, even if I'm waking up still at three o'clock, my recovery's still balanced. Got it, got it. But I can also know the days that my nutrition's not on point, okay. I'm going to see less recovery in different pieces. Okay. So it's really like the sleep has been the hardest thing for me to work on because I am like you, I want all these hours in the day, right? Sure, sure. But I'm getting better on that, but I'm still five to six. Even if you said, hey, sleep in nine, 10 hours, like yeah. I can't do it. Yeah. So, and then on the the, the nutrition side, I think one is like your water. We talked about different nutrients, what you're taking in, right? Because if you're not hydrating yourself, not hydrating your brain, different things, you're going to have different fatigue, brain fog, etc. Yeah. It's also if you're male and like you get into hormones and stuff, or you get different fatigue and brain mm -hmm. fog and all this other stuff. But again, having that solid diet based on, I'll call it a lot of like good, wholesome proteins, yeah. wholesome carbs, whatever, veggies, etc., and allowing your body to have what it needs for your mind to recover, to grow. Yeah. Um, and again, that's really understanding, like we talked about, like getting your blood work done, getting on a, a proper edge and making sure you're taking in the equivalent or what you need in regards to protein. Yeah. And, and um, again, supplementation on, on vitamins is key as well. You're, I mean, you're asking me how much I, I weighed, right? So I said 225, 230. Mm -hmm. um, and you recommend a, I mean, I was watching one of your videos, like a, a, a gram or a 1.5? Yeah, so I, I say like, most people are gonna probably tell you 0.85 to 0.1, like one gram. I, I'd rather tell you 1.25 grams per pound of body weight. Yeah. If you're 225, I'd say probably 250 grams of protein up. Yeah. Depending, if I'm gonna go and I was gonna do an, a show or I'm gonna cut for something, then I'm gonna probably raise my protein up to about 300 grams. I'll raise it? Yeah. Wow. And I, then cut the carbs. You'll lean out, yeah. 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 And yeah. I'll typically cut the carbs but take more of my calories in from protein. Yeah. And I tell people, if like even my kids, if you can't, you're not gonna eat all your food, I want you to eat your protein first, right? So, um, again, but a lot of people were into this thing that macros and like, it's all yeah. equal. I'm not sold on that necessarily, yep. but there's a lot of different, I think, things that you do get from a good diet. But yep. again, your sleep and your diet aren't going to allow you to just yeah. sort of outwork yourself in the gym. Now, so I'm Filipino dad. So one of the things I cannot are unable to, or to, I shouldn't say cannot, but maybe will not. <laughs> <laughs> is remove. What do you think Filipinos eat a lot of, Todd? You know me. You know Filipinos? What do we eat a lot of? No matter what, we're going to eat this with our plate of food, breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Carbs. Yeah, and what type of carbs? Rice. Rice, yeah. yeah. <laughs> white rice. rice. Yeah. Right. But white rice isn't bad. For it's you. not. Okay. In, Talk in, to me. In moderation. So a lot okay. of people said, hey, for brown rice, it's supposed to be all this, right? But there's lots of different studies and show. I, I think a fast-acting white rice like yeah. on a carb yeah in whatever portion you're supposed to have based on yeah. that diet it's great right okay so like because i feel full yeah but if you talk to like a horn and stuff that's mike eats a like ton of rice right and different things so really? calories but wow. again it, i don't think rice is bad if you're okay. over eating and you're eating like let's say if you have four different quarters and three and a half of rice then you might have yeah. an issue but from that standpoint um if you're balancing that with a good protein and yeah. everything else there's nothing wrong with that you know i've attempted to eat uh, like i'm a, I'm a ribeye guy yeah. ribeye and then uh, potatoes but uh, like the whole protein thing I'm, I'm, I'm attempting to increase but after i eat that meal of protein and i don't have rice i substitute with potatoes or something like that I feel hungry like a couple hours later. Yeah. Like, what? So what's going wrong? What's going? What's going on with my body? Do you have any There's idea? a bunch of different things. It depends on because fat allows you to be sat like satiated, right? So mm -hmm. you feel full. If yeah. you're not eating fat, but if you're eating ribeye, you should have that fat coming from it. Okay. Um, again, rice is a fast 
acting, but you said potatoes. Potatoes are too. They're a, yeah. a fast acting. So again, I don't know what the portions and stuff you're eating, but yeah. again, 16 ounce, 16 ounce, so yeah, eight, eight ounce steak. Yeah. I tell you, I don't know. You can always fill up as well, like getting get more water. Or, yeah. or, there's a lot of different ah, things depending it. on what you need. But again, if you're getting enough, you should be satiated on those meals. So if I had to, and I was pushed to, I'm in between appointments, I'm zigging and zagging, and I got to eat fast food. Okay. I'm just curious. Yeah. What would the CEO of Icon <laughs> Meal say? What would the fitness guy say? The dad bod show say? What would be if I had to go to a fat food spot? By the way, there's no sponsorship of yeah. any fast food you may ever mention. But where would be my go to if I had to, to, to an upside of more yeah. healthier side, if there's such a thing as fast food? And what would you order? I don't know. I know I'm going to say this and a bunch of people are going to criticize and stuff. But for me, it's probably I'd be grabbing a Chick fil A grilled chicken. Okay. That's just my okay. kid's choice, and I don't know, joking around. It's, so it's the number one. <laughs> it's just it, it's <laughs> close and it's number? easy for me. I'm probably though more like I don't know. Again, probably bad as well. But Quest bars, I do a lot of Quest okay. bars. It's the only bar yeah. that I can eat that doesn't screw my stomach up and stuff. Yeah. But I try to plan ahead, and for me, it's like I'm probably somebody will have always like trail mix or something with me yeah. in the car. Yeah. But if I had to do that, I'm just trying to Chick Fil A then. Chick Fil A. Why? It's guys' chicken, right? Good. Tasty, it's good. They close know. on Sundays. That's why it's good. <laughs> there you <laughs> good. go. Good. All right, so Chick Fil A, everybody. Ah, number one. No, so, no endorsement. We're not getting paid for this, but uh, um, let's talk about your career. So you you went from went from tech. Mm-hmm. Did, you, did you guys have an exit from that? Yeah. So we yep. sold. We had the funeral exchange, which is all their solutions, which mm-hmm. we rolled in and started Layer Tech. Yep. And then had Layer Technologies for fourteen years, and then we sold that to DataPipe, who sold to Rackspace in two thousand fourteen. Gotcha. Cool. So, so you had a because uh, we just went through our own exit uh, a couple years ago. We had a three hundred million dollar exit company downtown. Bought it's called Integrity Marketing Group. So, I, it was a kind of a cool process to to build something that somebody wants to acquire and and what that life is like after they acquire you. What the next level is going to be. Mm-hmm. So, w- would you attribute that's where you made a ton of your early experience and your money, learning tech, learning the the business entrepreneurial side of things before you start before you founded Icon. Yeah. So, uh, like I was, we were talking about before off camera, Icon was really like. It was interesting just because of the timing and stuff, right? So um, when we started Layer Tech 14 years before that, I had no money. I would just come down here, just found out we were pregnant. And then literally four, 15 years later, we had sold um, Layer Technologies. And then I told my wife we were going to start Icon. She's like, what the heck? Like, <laughs> we just found out we were pregnant again 15 years later with Ryder. I told you, yes. God told us we weren't done yet. And yes. Uh, yes. from that standpoint, it was just like, can't you get a normal job? Like, can't you just do something normal? But um, again, it's not, she knows me and that's not the way yeah. I'm wired and stuff. So that's when we started Icon and really. Um, when you when we ever employed? So I've never been really employed yeah. by anyone. So the closest yeah. thing to any employment was what I talked about. I had um, a job when I first came out, I was 20 years old. It was called Edge Technologies, but it was me and another 21 year old guy that were running um, Canada for yeah. a 34 year old entrepreneur billionaire which i learned a lot of bad lessons from um in australia and that's what got me down here but that was the closest thing i'd be to employed by anyone else so how did you know you're wired for entrepreneurship because a lot of people say listen i want something to save i want a good job something secure tell you a quick story so when i was going to college um our farm town had like little tiny couple thousand people in it how do you say the name of your college uh the college was laurentian 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 university yeah there you go but um so I grew up in a little farm town and then Honda came to our town. So Honda, the car factory. Really? And everyone was like, oh, you got to get a job here. Like all these people, MBAs and degrees, and they're all working at Honda. And I was still going to college and they're like, oh, you got to get a job here for the summer. And I'm like, whatever. So I ended up applying, got a job there, and I lasted two weeks. Uh, what happened? And my dad was like, so I quit because you go in here and you go, you put, I still remember this, yellow lines on the floor, white jumpsuit. You're going and doing your two hours, put them steering wheel or tires, whatever. And you have some dude at the end of the line yelling the crap at you and drinking his coffee. And then you go up through the cafeteria and you're walking your line to get your tray. And I was like, I can't do this. I'm not wired this way. Right? Yeah. So what I do, I quit. And I went, that's my first time ever network marketing. And Interesting. I a network marketing job that I was doing 90, 100 hours a week, door to door. What type of uh, in industry? Suit. It was uh, marketing, like pamphlets and like these discounts way back and stuff okay but i still remember like now you probably get shot going to people's houses in downtown toronto but knocking on doors but i did that in 90 degree heat and my wow. dad was like you're crazy you're like you like screwed your whole life up because yeah. you're never gonna get jobs up but that's just that's my first really into entrepreneurship how, how old were you i was probably 17 18 wow okay and uh again just that was when it was sort of all the different 
sales trainings and other things, Zig Ziglar back then and yeah. a bunch of other stuff, Tony Robbins and I Les mean, Brown and all this stuff. Yeah. So, yeah way back. But we just had we had just had Les Brown in our um at our event earlier this year. Man, what an icon. So what, what did network marketing teach you about business, about entrepreneurship? I think everybody wants to take a dabble in starting their own business, in my opinion, should have some form of network marketing okay, experience. Yeah. yeah, I think from the, the standpoint of really communication skills, I think networking has been one of the biggest things that's helped me um, in any of my businesses um, build business. Um, I think also the biggest thing for me is probably definition of risk, right? People are so fearful of risk and I think to me, it's not risk. I've never had risk in any of my businesses because it's calculated on betting on me. So if okay. I can't bet on myself, right, yeah. then I think you've got a problem. But th that comes up even today. So many, a lot of people are always, they want to come and yeah. they want to raise or they want to start their own thing. And I'm all for people starting their own thing. And But again, they want something, but they don't want any of the risk associated yeah. with it, right? So I think that and then um, really just the discipline and you're, you're eating what you kill, right? right? So if you're not making it, but learning and taking things that, I don't know, like different levels of other people have had, right? Mm -hmm. And then trying to implement those and looking at how you work and that fear of rejection. So mm -hmm. I can still remember knocking on thousands and thousands and thousands of doors before yep. I would get that yes, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know, I learned from a lot of the people later on in life too, like Larry Raskin and a bunch of people from, I was in ACN for a long time and yeah, yeah. built that up in re the Dallas operations here. Back, so. to the, back to the tech side of things. Tech side, yeah. <laughs> but um, just... A lot of things, I think, from personal development is the biggest thing, right? And um, yeah, I mean, you can't get that as your as your own individual retail operation or solo op, so, solopreneurship. You get you think you get more of that personal development focus with a network marketing type of environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 100. I like a lot of people all the time are like, oh, I need want to be an entrepreneur. I'm like. Look, you don't have to be an entrepreneur, okay? There's a lot of good entrepreneurs. Correct. And I think yep. a ton of people make great money, 300, 500,000, 700,000 as an entrepreneur, yeah. right? Yeah. But they had all the headache. And yeah. I think some days, hey, <laughs> yeah. it's probably better, right? But, yeah. but again, whatever you want to be wired like, but again, it, it, the biggest thing goes back to like, I see so many people as well say, hey, in life, okay, I'm going to do this when this is perfect, right? Or when yeah. this happens. And I say, look, there's never a perfect time. I have a thing I always say, I say, better is perfect, okay? Yeah. Because there's perfection's this myth, right? Yeah. The only perfect person is Jesus, okay? From Amen. that st standpoint. We all know what to do to him. Yeah. <laughs> but from that point, like, there's so much, like, hesitation, right, to move forward. And I think yeah. you get caught up and you get surrounded. And then what do they do? They procrastinate. They don't do anything. Yeah. But, yeah. again, a lot of overcoming objections yeah. and sales training and all that were big things that helped me grow all my business. So. It's interesting because, uh, you know, of course, you know, PHP were a network marketing style type of uh, life insurance organization, retirement service yep. type of organization. But I find myself also getting hired to do consulting work for people that are not network marketing, just to see what type of culture we can teach them how to develop and from their sales leadership uh, standpoint. So they're willing to pay for our counsel to coach them on how to build that type of network marketing culture for their, yep. you know, their non-traditional or for their traditional business model, and it works. Yeah. You know, and, and Patrick right now is running these conferences, teaching the world about entrepreneurship, the Vault Conference. People paying fifteen thousand dollars. To, to have a front seat, and guess what? They want to know how we built PHP. Mm -hmm. How did you build? It's through a network marketing yeah. type of distribution. But you also see that in the, in the sports supplement industry. One of the most successful companies out there is First Form, right? Right. And yeah, yeah. Sally and Sal and Chris, yeah. and yeah. they've built that based on that same culture, and they crush it. Yeah. So absolutely. So I, I, I asked you that. Let me. Now that you brought that up, I want to fast forward to that question. So your distribution currently today with uh, with Icon, how do you distribute your your your, sure. your 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 products? Yeah, we have a couple of different I'll call it lines of revenue or business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, first is direct to consumer, so the Icon brand, and that's through um, mostly online. So we mm -hmm. have IconMeals.com, and then also we have a bunch of wholesalers around the U.S. So um, as you mentioned, Ultimate Sports Nutrition, yeah. a bunch of like. Um, health supplement vitamin stores. Always got, always got bags yeah. with your meals in it. <laughs> and then we have a bunch of uh, gyms that carry our products. Um, and then we were in like a bunch of the retail chains and stuff. Okay. Um, we also then have the functional food sites. We do have a snack side, so the protein popcorn, a bunch of other snacks. And those mm -hmm. are in a lot of the retailers. Um, Army Air Force Exchange, some other ones. And then we also have um, another line that we actually do a private label business. Gotcha. But uh, can you show my screen here quick, uh, Jordan, please? So I can show everybody the Icon Meals website. So there it is. So you have, you have a bunch of stuff here that you can get in, a, in the mail. Correct. Yeah, yeah, you can have it shipped anywhere in the U.S. overnight. We have a lot of uh, business travelers and stuff as well that just we can ship to any hotels. Um, so if, if I'm going for a conference, for example, we do uh, Chris, we do conferences in August in Las Vegas, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest hangouts for us is yeah. 
Uh, yeah, the, 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 what do you call that? The food court. Yeah. Everybody's always packed the food court. We're eating hotel food for three, four days. Yeah. So we could get. Yeah, these. you can have them shipped to your hotel rooms. That's one of our, probably prior to COVID, that was probably our biggest line of business. Just if, I don't know, you can also schedule it out. So if you know where yeah. you were, let's say for, I don't know, you're traveling and you're four weeks on the road. Yeah. You could have it in New York, Philadelphia, San Diego, California, and show up in your hotel room when you want it to. So you can go on here. Um, again, it's not locked into a subscription. So you yeah. can subscribe and save, or you can just buy. Um, ship it out for those. One for that week. Ship it out, whatever you want. Yeah. Wow. Because we're doing, we're doing a retreat, Millen Point Bay Shop annual roundtable retreat in, in, uh, in uh, I believe, believe, Utah. So we can send these meals Correct. out there. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, hey. I'll, I'll be I'll be ordering more because I'm, I'm more than just ultimate nutrition. So let me ask you this question: So you have wholesalers, retailers, wholesalers out there. I'm just curious since you do have a network marketing background, why didn't you uh, start a network marketing type of distribution for Icon? Yes, yeah, great name by the way, Icon. It's good, e uh, easy to sell. Yeah, really, there is no there's no good explanation why we haven't <laughs> built it. We don't honestly, we haven't had salespeople. So from day one, it's pretty much been through more partnerships. Yeah. Uh, as we do have a few of the bigger ones, so we work with like the UFC, we do all their food. Um, again, from that standpoint, a lot of, I guess, connections and stuff have come through mm -hmm. relationships and such like that. Yeah. A lot of their partnerships, USAT, the Dallas Cowboys, a bunch of others that we uh, work with. And then we also work with a lot of like the schools and different things. So that's how we've typically built it out. But um, nice. yeah, it's a little bit different. It's Again, on perishable food, it's interesting compared to having uh, something that's not perishable. There's a lot of different, um, I'll call it pieces along the way that come into where if it was just a supplement, right? Yeah. And it has different shelf life and it doesn't matter if it doesn't make it there. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of different nuances. Because it's all and, vacuum sealed in, into that. Well, correct. Yeah, but yeah, yeah if it's yeah. fresh food, right, it's going yeah. out and then let's say FedEx or one of our friendly neighborhood carriers don't deliver it, then you got a bunch of different concerns and different things to deal with. So there's a lot of uh, fun stuff and regulation in the food space as well. So when you are... Uh, uh, the other thing I'll tell you, sorry, mm -hmm. to jump back, mm -hmm. we have looked at the network marketing with oh, a couple okay. of big companies. The problem is as well on food, you do not have a lot of margin. Yeah. Okay? I did, I did. So in regards to the levels of yeah. compensation and stuff from sure. a typical, yeah. it's a little bit harder to do it that way. Yeah. yeah. You have to have some form of upfront enrollment for everybody because that could be part of the revenue source. Correct. If, I, if I recruit you, I get. And there's some of, when you look at how many levels down in general, all these mm -hmm. things. There's not Bonuses. a whole lot of margin compared to other forms of yeah. product in that space. How has uh, COVID in the last four years affected food prices for you? So you've got inflation. You've got food prices going up. Um, over the last couple of years, pretty steady. Um, I think also the biggest thing is like a lot of tariffs on gas and transportation that too. logistics costs. So it's just not food. It's, not it's delivering food. the food. Yeah. 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 If you look at FedEx and EPS and the carriers, you're typically at least probably a seven, nine percent, whatever it's called, GRTC increase. And you do find a lot. So that's why yeah. a lot of companies either are going to stay smaller and local. Yeah. Or you have to be big. Yeah. Because in between you're going to get crushed on the sort of transportation and everything other is that is that the vision of uh, of icon is 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 to uh, be big enough that somebody wants to acquire you one day and they, they take over and you sell it to an equity equity you know, hedge fund or something like that or yeah i think there's yeah. um in this space you're either going to be an acquirer or an acquiree yeah so you're seeing a lot of uh, acquisitions right now today um so be a lot more now the interest rates are dropped yeah, yeah and there's just there's a lot of different things so um yeah gotcha. so out, out of the different competitors you'd have in your space, what separates Icon from the other meal prep type companies? Sure. I think one of the things is we still cook all our own proteins, right? So a lot of people use um, pre-cuts or they use frozen pieces of chicken or they'll bring in six ounce frozen fillets, et cetera. So we have what's called a raw room. Um, and raw room is where we trim and cut all our meat. So everything comes in raw. You're cutting off the fat. You're trimming. Where, where are you getting it from? Where you, where's your? Uh, it depends. From? We have farms. Well, and, yeah. yeah. So when people say, "Hey, I buy from this local farm and that local farm," that's a bunch of crock of crap because at certain they can't support like, it. points you can't support it. Yeah. And also from being USDA, you need to track everything. So we have been USDA for probably five or six years, and they live with us. So from an inspection standpoint, um, you have to track everything coming in, everything going out, where it's going. So they're inspecting everything with recalls, wow. etc. Yeah. So wow. it's a uh, pretty big ordeal yeah just so so you're you're, you're right there it, everything's fresh you're cutting it raw so it's really yeah, so fresh you can be on, on the market yeah and that's i think one of the bigger things there th one of the thing is probably we deliver anywhere in the u.s within 24 hours jeez um wow from that standpoint i think and then you just got to look at uh, again quality and stuff mm -hmm. there's a lot of difference we buy quite a bit of our competitors food mm -hmm. um the other big thing i would say is there's only 
of all the names that you guys are going to see out there, there's just know that all these guys don't make their own food. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of big co-manufacturers yeah. that make a lot of their food. So they're really just marketing companies on the front end. Yeah. And as I mentioned, we do private label. Okay. So we won't mention names, but sure. do private label for some of the other brands as well. Well, let's, let's do this for the viewers that's watching this right now and you like to get a box. What, I, what I'm going to do is anybody here that comments what the biggest takeaway is from this point of the podcast, and what's your biggest takeaway so far of my conversation with Todd? Put in the comment section below, and we will randomly select three people to get a box of food from Todd. Awesome. Right? And uh, whether oh, there's so many different ways. You got, you got uh, Icon Meal Plans, Extreme uh, Keto, whatever, whatever you like, we do for you. If you comment below and participate, what your biggest takeaway is thus far at this point of the podcast. Let's get some of this product out into your fridge so you can eat it. Um, let me ask you this question about... Um, about uh, understanding, you know, you know the environments that we are because you lived in Canada, yeah. you lived in in America. We've got an election coming up. W what do you think that a lot of Americans don't see? Because you know, Canada's very socialistic, and we just talked about COVID off yeah. camera, how restricted it was, and mm -hmm. and 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 how, and how they treated you mm -hmm. coming back into Dallas yeah, and all yeah. this stuff, and the vaccines yeah. and stuff like that. And your your son's playing uh, hockey up there, right? And so, how, how have you seen, as a person with, with both perspectives of Canada and America, how have you seen the governments being run and what's the dangers of what you see that potentially America could be yeah. facing? I think, like, the socialistic standpoint, people always say, oh, yeah, Canada's great, right? It's, it's free medicine and free healthcare and all this stuff. But then they haven't been going to a hospital and trying to get it in the ER where there's, like, everyone and their mother lined up because they've got a cold or a cough. And example, my mom, my mom, my dad, I'll take that example. So he had um, cancer. And mm. to get treatment and stuff in Canada, it was, like, months and months and months. So we ended up paying for procedures done in Buffalo and in the States. So go across the board. Yeah, and, uh, like, my, my family has, my mom's good friends are doctors up there and stuff, but they are all leaving traditional yeah. Canadian healthcare, right, to go either private practice or in the States, just because on that socialistic side, it's it's not the best. And, like, my mom's got a bunch of different issues and stuff, but her whole thing is, like, four months out, five months <laughs> in, I'm like, I don't even know you're going to be alive four months, right? So from that standpoint, it's not the best in scenario. And if you're looking yeah. at, like, either I'll call it more... I won't say dictatorship, but like communistic mm -hmm. sort of societies. I think there's different points of that that you see in there, um, especially with a lot of things during COVID and a lot of the different issues that came to Canada. When you talk about like sort of government for the people and stuff, I don't really see it that way. There's a lot of different decisions that are made that sort of um, are more oppressive to the people than they really would say beneficial. And if you look at tax rates and stuff right now, yeah, tell me. if you're at the high end of the bracket, I think you're paying 62%. Or so if I'm probably the seven-figure squad millionaire in Canada. You are paying 60% to the Canadian government. Wow! Thank you very much. Yeah. So a lot of friends that I have that lived in Ontario or Montreal, whatever, um, if they don't have some things set up, they're offshore now. So a lot of them have gone to um, Cayman Islands, yeah. um, British Virgin Islands. They've taken, there's a Canadian expat or whatever you can go. Yeah. So a lot of them are down there just based on taxes and the, the whole business that- Or they come here to America. They come to America, but yeah, there's just, again, the whole visa situation even into America, right, is not as simple. Um, no. There used to be a lot of different loopholes and stuff and that's wow. been tightened up. And then especially over the past four years with the vaccine requirements, um, that was a whole, it still is. It's like, people don't see it. It's not presented. It's not immediate. Front, right? And it's just yeah. like, it's it really, if you want to get in, you want a green card and different things and you're going to go through the process, they're expecting you, you need to be vaccinated. So right. that's sort of, that's our U.S. government. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah, I, I can imagine. I'm, and I'm thinking too, in uh, in Canada, uh, when we went, we went out to uh, um, Lake Louise, that's... Uh, Alberta. Yeah. yeah, that's right, Banff. Yeah. Yeah. Right, Banff. And I just saw God's country. It's beautiful. Wide open, yeah. wildlife, just just beautiful, pristine, air was clean. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, I need I need a gun because if I'm walking and I, I run across a bear, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not going to you know, do yeah. harsh language, man. The bear's coming after me or yeah. something or, or a, a puma, mountain yeah. lion. But up there in Canada, you can't have a gun, can you? Yeah, if you were going to shoot that bear, puma, whatever, you're going to jail. So it's uh it's pretty restricted there's no that say what no i'm defending myself right here. Uh, it's different i told you i don't know the exact year but i know they they like took our guns more than you've seen lots of things talked about like exchanging for dollars yeah. exchanging for different things but yeah. all that like yeah you can't have i don't believe you can have open conceal you can't carry in stuff in canada handgun laws are totally different and just people's perception of what the government's has them believing in different things and that it's put out there yeah. so you're basically a criminal if you have a gun in your own house and someone comes in your house and you shoot them you're, yeah you're, you're on the, the wrong side what yeah. so you don't even have a stand your ground type, i can't even protect my house so what's the point of having a door 
hopefully it's locked. <laughs> I, if that, I mean, if they can cut it down, if they can kick it down, yeah. and you can't defend yourself, well, the next thing is they stab them. But if you stab them, you're still, you're still at the yeah. wrong side of law. Then, yeah. Be careful who you vote for, man. You know, uh, um, you know, Plato once says, to not at least understand politics and not have some form of minimal involvement is to one day be ruled by your inferiors. Is that what you want? And so when you're, you're, you're seeing this election, um, I'm not going to ask you who you're going to be voting for, but is there any policies that if you're evaluating a candidate, which policies would you say would be the most important for a Todd Abrams, a CEO, yes. employees, people? What would be the most advantageous for you to create policies to create better opportunities for you? Yeah, I think it's to me it's pretty cut and dry, but we won't name names. But from the standpoint of putting on, I'll just say it, I'd, for Trump, right? It's To me, it has more on the, the value for business, value for really what... I'll call more even going back to biblical truths and stuff, right? Mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. regards to, I see a lot, at least in this is, I'll take it just on my own opinion and stuff, but from standardization and breaking down that family unit, right? And trying to take away what has been created and what my core beliefs are and what, like how I try to raise my family and stuff, right? Where you have all this gender neutrality and all this other BS. Mm -hmm. and like my kid knows there's two sexes, okay? There's nothing else. There's no Zers and they them. Zander, but, and then to like, there's a whole bunch of different things I think are just really, oppressing and, and putting us into a position that is weakening us right yeah and from like different things on abortion and all this i'm 100 percent on the one way and but yeah. again i think it's just there's a lot of different things that i think are we're seeing the other candidate right now sort of start to a little bit pivot on but mm -hmm. that's just going to be in, at least in my mind right to try mm -hmm. to swing those votes and then we, we haven't even talked about though immigration and like people would right. i'll say hey i'm and it, like again i can't vote right because i still yeah. have my visa yeah but from that standpoint looking at all the people that are coming in and they're going to be allowed to vote and the illegals and different things it's crazy to me right yeah but uh, like that just it, when we talk about like for the people and putting those people that we're mm -hmm. supposed to be putting in office yeah. to watch over us i think we're way out of there so i'd say like I don't even know if you want to say who you can really trust, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I think it's when you talk about looking at how you protect your own family and how you have your own house in order, mm -hmm. you really need to have your own house in order. Sure. So Not, not just from a financial no, standpoint. From, from everything standpoint. Yeah, like, the biggest thing Protection. that comes to my mind was food. Yeah. Like, it, it, or we're, we're, we're starting a pantry or in storage just, just because we're stocked. We're stock well, it's funny because you see, like, what they said about the dock workers the other day, right? Right. And then now, so that dock strikes over. But if you look at, like, I walked in Home Depot this morning, and there's stacks of paper towel and toilet paper up, like, 12 feet high but the lineup that i saw in northern in frisco for costco the other day was like four miles long and that's right. just again the mentality right what yeah. they're putting out there what the news shows yeah. okay today yeah so it's it's int i think like the next month a couple months is gonna be really interesting yeah especially going into not only the election but also going to christmas to see how this yeah. uh, inflation has yeah. affected uh, uh plans um when i'm Talking about faith, I mean, obviously, I, I, I sense and I feel and I see you having faith in your life and how you're raising your family. And, and uh, we, if we can show the uh, the Dad Bod podcast, uh, Dad Show, if we can show my screen real quick. You know, you, you you want to inspire men. And when I'm looking at this, not only are you guys jacked and ripped, but you're leading with your boys, your sons. And I'm, I'm, the business of being a dad. You know, and the, the, we're both in a 50 club. O'Hearn's in a 50 club. We're in our 50s, yeah. and guys are jack. You guys, I'm, I'm still trying to get there, but you guys are jack. You guys are, look at you. They're all oiled up and looking beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what, what's what's the business of being a dad? What's the business of being yeah. a father today from a faith? Because I think the, the, the weakening of the man, the weakening of our faith over the years has eroded where we are in a community, where we are in a business community. What what is the importance for you from a faith standpoint, from a fatherhood standpoint? Yeah, from a faith standpoint, I think that's my basis, right? That's my, I'll call it my foundation, right? Mm -hmm. If it's not built on a firm foundation, then it's going to be built on that, that sand, right? sand, right? And I don't want that, right? And I think that's one of the biggest things is I always pray and hope that from me raising my boys, like my two kids and then my daughter as well, right, that they are... They, I have instilled enough in them through church and through our network and yep. through reading the Bible and um, the Christian sort of values and everything that we have for them. But yep. the dad bod really came to me. It's just, it's from, when I say the business of being dad, because I see a lot of people that it's it's a job, right? You're the yep. CEO. It's, you have to be accountable. You have to be responsible. And if you're not, who's going to be, right? Yep. And um, I don't know. I see a lot of dads and different things that are not in shape, and not in different things. And it's what kind of example do you want to set for your kid? You can have all the money in the world, but if you're not healthy, 
your kids, you know, this see yes. everything, they yeah. copy everything, they hear everything, mm -hmm. whether you think they do or not. Yep. And they they form their own opinion. Look, look at this, look at this picture. Yo, I'm gonna look. Ah, look at that man. You got your ribs showing. Your muscle. What's that? What's that? Russell called serratus. Your serratus yeah. is showing. Got your abs showing. <laughs> well, I mean, what, what's it like for your your kids to see you run dads maybe in the 40s and 50s? I mean, do they mention anything anything to you? Yeah, I think my youngest doesn't really know any different. Like maybe the older ones. He's seen yeah. me since I've been here, right? But my older ones, yeah, they. They know that it takes a lot of hard work, and I see it, yeah. it also transposes in my my kids, right? But my little one, like I told you, we were at the lake, and we'll be at the lake, and then his yeah. friends will be with us on the boat, or they're like, hey, your dad has a six-pack, <laughs> whatever. And then it's like, and then it'll be a joke that, hey, Pretty his good. dad's yeah. whatever, going to get on it or whatever. But from the standpoint, like, I want to be able to help other fathers, right? Yeah. I think, like I mentioned, I just came back from this thing. It was called Dad Camp in East Texas at Sky Ranch, and it was awesome, right? whatever, 52 other fathers just pouring into the one-on-one -on -one time um, with, with their, their kids and stuff and yeah. um, three days, but just different activities and stuff and really instilling those values, right? And building um, commonality, if you yeah. want to say, and with everyone. But um, again, that's sort of the pillars and we, again, try on a daily basis just to hope that we can be better each and every day. And like, again, all the stuff that we're working for, to me, it's just, can I be a better steward of the things that God's blessed me with, right? Yeah. The gifts, the talents. Yeah. And again, how do I, every day I'm asking, hey, who can I impact today? How can I add more value? Mm -hmm. And again, that's a big shift for me because up till probably my mid forties, that wasn't exactly it. I thought, hey, sure, I am Christian, right? I'm going to church, I've been baptized way before, but it, it's, there's been a, a big shift in those last, I'll call it like probably five, six years. It's, it's crazy, the shift of this, you know, what you're talking about, the pronouns and the shift of, you know, just seeing the, the more frequency of, frequency of seeing drag. And, and, and uh, I went to the, uh, went to go to a local restaurant here in Dallas. They said it's gender neutral bathroom. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, like I was confused. I walked into Kansas City Airport. Yeah. And I walked in this bathroom and I saw women come in. I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. She yeah. said, no, no, come in. I'm like, what do you mean? Yeah. They're gender neutral. And I'm like, yeah. wow, I'm not used to that. So. And I, and I went to a, a, a new Japanese spot downtown. It was a gender neutral bathroom because I was going to the bathroom. Excuse me, I'm going to the bathroom. And there's a big line. And I'm, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm in the wrong line. But I noticed men and women were in the same line. Yeah. And I'm like, what, what, what's up here? It's well, crazy. this is the land for bathroom. Well, where's the men's land? Where's the girl? No, it's all the same bathroom. Crazy, yeah. And so from an economic and business standpoint, you know, I was telling myself, it's taking me a long time to get back to my friends. So I'm not going to order more drinks. I'm not going to order more food. As soon as I go to the bathroom, I'm out. Yeah. So this whole trying to fit this whole DEI, ESG type, type, type of quota or forced policy is keeping guys with money like ourselves from spending more money because we're spending more time in the damn bathroom. That's crazy. Yeah. So it's, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. make so it's it's going opposite. You know, when when uh, what would you encourage uh, men? They're they're going. They want to go through a transformation. They want to put their fitness together, their finances together. Is there any any if you were to pick one skill set from every these three the, the faith, family, fi finance? You would pick one from each category. What skill set would you have them focus on, improve on? Wrapping up this year and going to the next. Yeah, I think for faith first, to yep. me, the easiest way to get in is your daily devotional, right? Your time with God. Okay. So for me, that's my first thing in the morning. Amen. So if it's 3 o'clock, 3.30, whatever, I have my routine. I have prayer time. I have my devotional. I have scripture reading and then I read um, before I go to the gym. So from that standpoint, then I'll call my family. My family to me, I'm always like people say, hey, you're selfish, whatever, you're up, blah, blah, blah. But it's not that. I think like if I can't have my time, mm -hmm. then my family time, I, I'm not going to show up as the best that I can be for my family, for my people at work and other things, right? So my family time is always going to be, I always drive him. I made a thing since he's been born. I always drive him to school, drop him off, etc. Then I head to the office. And then at the end of the night, like we talked about before, I'm always going to be putting him to bed, right? So yeah. 8, 30, 9 o'clock, that's my time with him. Um, mm -hmm. Date night every week with my wife. I told you, have been married 26 years together, 30 years. Um, again, just you got to make like, that's my queen, right? It's my princess. So yeah. she needs to feel like that. And again, it's, it has to be time with us alone, um, outside of the kids and stuff. Cause it's great having kids time, but I need that, that time with her. Um, from the fitness side, you have to make a decision. Okay. And again, don't but let, me, let me stop on the, yeah. in the, in the devotion standpoint. Like when, when I say the devotion, uh, and I and read scripture, what's the attitude, what's the disposition you have in approaching the Bible and yeah. open up scripture? So, what do you we expect from God? To yeah. So for me, it's, I, I like people say, I want to be discipled. Where I think from the standpoint is what people maybe have a little bit backwards and maybe it's only my own opinion. I think God is not looking for disciples. I want to be an apprentice, right? So how am I looking at how am I living the best I can be 
to the way he lived, right? Yeah. And the, the things that he showed and different things. And then at the end, it's like, hey, I'm hoping that I've left it all here, right? And yeah. um, done what I need to do. And so for me, it was at the start, I think, like looking at, hey, what's my purpose here? What's my calling, et cetera? But the devotional for me helps me get into different things, right? And if I'm, I also use scripture a little bit differently. So from an, from an anxious standpoint, or mm -hmm. if I have different things, I'm going to go read different passages. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I've done a lot of different Bible studies on different chapters and different, um, like, so a lot of different things I still go to Bible study once a week right now. But, um, for me, that's how I look at it. And every day I'm trying to, whatever my devotional is, I'll have a different scripture typically at the bottom, right. That I'll yeah. dive into yeah. and spend probably the next 15, 20 minutes. Um, Love it. probably read it once or twice, go back through, but, um, yeah. Yeah, so it's amazing. So, so uh, faith. What about fitness? Was so one thing you can yeah. So right now, in fitness, I would say you got to make a, a decision, right? And again, it's not a decision. Oh, yeah. Well, when I'm going to do this, it's like you just got to put your foot down, and make that decision. Once you make that decision, even if it's just starting to walk, right? Like if you're not where you want to be, then take the, the steps. And I'll call it like it's not just hey, if you're 300 pounds, you want to be 200 pounds. You're only going to celebrate when you get to 200 pounds. Right. Celebrating those little tiny incremental wins, right? Good. And you got to understand as well, there's no magic pill, there's no magic potion, okay? It's you're going to have to put in the hard work. And if you can't hold yourself accountable, you have to find someone else that can hold yourself accountable to mm -hmm. that, right? And understand that like. You're not going to accept excuses. You're going to put in the time, rain, shine, whatever it is, whatever you told yourself you're going to do, hold yourself to that word. Yeah. Okay. Cause if you're not doing that, who are you cheating yourself? If you have a family, you're cheating your, your, your wife, you're cheating your kids, you're cheating yeah. everything else. Yeah. And if you're a man of your word, you yeah. shouldn't be going back and doing that. Right. Sure. So, um, and I'm a big believer, like if, if you've created wealth or you've created this ultimate body that you want, you should be to take that discipline and put it across any other area of life. That's right. And if you're not, then what's that one thing holding you back? Is it mental? Is it, what is that? And you got to really identify that. And then once you identify it, you can go to work on fixing that. But there's no, I'll call it excuse in my mind, if you're this, why you can't have that same level of achievement right. throughout the other areas. How you do one thing is how you, how you do everything. everything. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so we got and finance. Let's talk about finance. So finance, I think it's <laughs> first, probably not listening to the, the masses. Um, I'll call it from an investment standpoint, from business decisions, anything. I'm never going to listen to anyone who's not in a position that I would want to be. So if um, I don't know, someone's going to do my investments, my insurance, whatever, right? If they're not in that position that I want to be in, mm -hmm. I'm not going to listen. I'm not going to take advice from broke people. Okay. Sure. And I think um, you have to define your own definition, as I mentioned before, of risk. And I don't just mean financially, but from yeah. business decisions. Um, but again, and Savings is not, not always the best way. So, so many people say, hey, I'm saving this money and stuff, but you always have to have your money working for you, right. right? So it's yeah. looking at like... It's a currency. Correct. It's a current. And it has to keep it. flowing because yeah, right. if it doesn't keep flowing, it's going to go away. So yeah. um, again, looking at that and then also from the standpoint for me, it's a, it's a big giving, right? Like yeah. it's, I think a lot of people don't, they believe like they're stingy, okay? They're going to, hey, if I, I don't have this to give, but I think whatever you give, God's going to bless you with, and you're going to see it come back in some form or fashion, depending on how you, you set that out. I love it. I love it. I, I've had a couple of different Fs, and on Sundays it's football. So, uh, <laughs> there you go. It's faith, family, finance, football, but on Sundays, not necessarily in that order. <laughs> Go Bears. Just kidding. <laughs> you, have, you have a team? I'm not a big football guy. We yeah. grew up in Canada, so CF, CFL wasn't really football. But You're not uh, an Alouette guy? No. Okay, so. I got you. What, what would be, I've got a few, few minutes here. Is there any message you, CEO, Todd, man of faith, leader in our community, what's, what's the message you want to put out to the world? Anything you want to wrap into our community of faith and finance, community sales leaders that's watching the Seven Figure Squad? Yeah, I think from the standpoint of really just understanding that there's never this perfect time, right? So whether it be your faith, whether it be fitness, finance, whatever, don't get yourself held up on this facade that it's got to be perfect because is it the perfect time to get married? No, right? You're probably broke and you probably have these all these issues and people all the time come across saying, oh, I have this issue or that issue. And it's like, look, if you looked at everyone else's issues, you'd think your issues aren't half as bad, right? So again, making that decision and then putting a plan in place. And so many people, I think, want to get wherever they're trying to get without a plan in place, right? And if you can't have that plan in place and you're not prepared, then you're not measuring and you're not going to have yeah. success on whatever it is. So I think just don't get caught up. Use the same sort of better is perfect. Work on being better every single day. If you can be 1% better in every area of your life, so if that was 1% better in your faith, your family, your finance, your fitness, right? And you're showing up and that 1% is compounded, just like money, right? Compounds every single day that one right. penny right right and then at the end you're going to look back in a month and go holy crap this is like yeah. i made some change and then understanding on the especially on the, the fitness side i think on 
from a health standpoint, once you have the protocol in place, then all you're doing is you're taking the resources that you've learned, right? And you can know, hey, I, I want to lose a little bit of weight. Well, I need to adjust this one volume, right? Or this one, or I have this quiver, this arrow in my quiver that does this. And that might be cardio, might be different. Like you're going to learn a bunch of different things. And it's also what you put in your body. And uh, again, I think you need to treat yourself like looking at like, hey, what is that path of longevity? That's right. And try to then don't like don't not worry about it, right? You need to look at every single area and really, yeah. are you where you want to be? And if you're not, you guys got to make that decision. You're the only one that can make that change in life. And if nothing changes, nothing changes. That's right. So yeah, that's right. You're here from Todd Abrams. And by the way, that last one reminds me of my last gotcha. My book gotcha is procrastination. That procrastination is the assassination of the elevation to your God given destination. So that being said, Todd, I appreciate you being on the show. You drop a lot of gems and value on the show and man, more power to you and your, your aspirations and, and the, the, Things you got going on, and I'm really inspired by you. We need more men of faith, women of faith, leading out there in a God given perspective. And uh, if you guys want to find more information, we got all of the links to Todd Abrams right here in the description column. So make sure you follow Todd on his Instagram, you follow his blog, you follow his podcast, and make sure it, nonetheless you order his meals, man, because what you put into your body, what you put in, what you're going to get out. And for those, just as a reminder, I mentioned that if you are dropping your, your takeaways, in the comment section below, we're going to randomly select three of our viewers to get a box of food of Icon Meals from Mr. Todd Abrams himself from our podcast to your address. That being said, guys, please subscribe. Please uh, let us know. If you don't want to comment on what your biggest takeaway was, well, did you agree with us? Did you not agree with us? We want to know what is your feedback. That being said, from Dallas, Texas, on behalf of Todd Abrams, I'm your money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart. Today. God bless you guys. Bye bye.